Hey everybody, today is Saturday, August 24th, 2019, and I can't believe we're getting to the end of our 30 days of live YouTube readings. I'm just adjusting my headphones. So today I'm going to read an excerpt from Ask Your Angels, and at the top here it says, a practical guide to working with the messengers of heaven to empower and enrich your life. And this book was actually given to me many years ago. And it's so interesting how things come back around later on in life and have relevance. So I'm going to go ahead and read to you um, part of chapter four. It's a section. Well, the chapter is titled Grounding and it has a nice picture well, illustration anyway. And here we go. Because angels are heavenly messengers and winged ones at that, you might find it a bit strange that the very first step in connecting with them is called grounding. Wouldn't it make more sense to get off the ground? Contrary to what you might think, grounding is essential in any kind of spiritual work, and you will find it enormous you and you will find it enormously helpful in your everyday life too. Grounding means centering your attention in your body and being present in the moment. It is the act of gathering together all of your energies, mental, emotional, and physical, and bringing your thoughts and your feelings into calm and harmonious balance in your body. When you are grounded, it's much easier to selectively focus your attention, whether you are working at a job or on a project, and, whether it, and whenever you want to meditate, visualize, or hear the voice of your angel. For much of our lives, we're on automatic pilot. Perhaps you've had the experience while driving on a long car trip of suddenly realizing that you're behind the wheel. <laughs> You've covered 10, 20 miles or more, changing lanes, signaling, applying the brakes when necessary, but your mind was a million miles away. We all daydream from time to time. When, daydream, when daydreaming is habitual, it's called absent-mindedness. And heaven only knows the number of things we've misplaced, appointments we've missed, or mistakes we've made when our body was present, but our mind was elsewhere. It happens when we don't want to be doing what we're doing, or we don't want to hear what somebody is saying, or we don't want to be where we are. If we can't leave a situation physically, we leave mentally. Our attention goes out to other thoughts, other times, other places. It's easy to tell when someone isn't paying attention because there's a vacant expression on, their per on the person's face. The lights are on, but nobody's home. Learning to ground, to collect and stabilize your energies will make a big difference in your life. It will allow you to be fully present, alert but relaxed, and receptive. You can think of grounding as tying a boat to the dock or hammering tent pegs into the earth. When you are grounded, you are anchored, connected, safe, and secure. Grounding is simple, but it is the basis for establishing ongoing communication with your angel. And I'll stop there. So what I love about this is that uh, I completely agree. When I was stepping into a space of <sighs> connecting more with, with uh, learning about energy and metaphysics and certainly meditation, grounding was a very huge first piece of that for me. So much so that eventually, uh, somewhere about like maybe four years ago or so, I recorded my own guided meditation called Get Grounded and Regain Inner Peace. And if you'd like to check that out, you can certainly do so either by going to the Insight Timer app where you can listen to it for free. Just search for my name, Kim O'Neill, or you can go to kimoneillcoaching.com and download it directly from my website and listen anytime you wish. And I think grounding is just, it's really key. I know this came up in a previous reading we did recently. So uh, I really wanted to share this. The other thing I wanted to mention is that a lot of these readings, um, what I really love to do is I love to just randomly open up the book and see, you know, I ask a question. I say, you know, what's the message that wants to come out for today's video, for today's viewers? And I just randomly open. And pr pretty much all the time, like, I don't know, let's say 99% of the time, uh, maybe 98% of the time, uh, I open up to something and it's just, it's, it's like, it's a complete message. It's so ideal and ready to be shared as a complete message, even though it's just an excerpt from a book. But today that's, that wasn't quite the case. So initially when I opened up 
in today's book. And this is a pretty thick book, by the way. I just wanna show it to you. It's, it's a little different shaped. It's more like a, I guess it's a square. It's pretty thick. Um, but initially it actually opened up to a section called categories of angels. And so I wanted to share, you know, I figured this happened for a reason too. So I wanna share with you um, just a little bit about this because I know for a very long time, I used to only think of, um, you know, it actually wasn't until about 2011 when my grandmother, just before she went into the hospital and passed away, I started receiving angel signs and I did, but I didn't know they were angel signs until literally the, I believe it was the day that my grandma died. And, um, and then I put all the pieces together and it was, it was amazing. Um, so around, so in 2011, that's when I started getting into the practice of becoming more aware of angels. And for many years, I would just, you know, when I would call upon my angels, just refer to them as just angels in general. But um, it was really cool. There was someone in my life recently who uh, she shared a different book that she had read and talked about, you know, there being different types of angels and we can speak to them. And that's for help in any different area of our life. And it was so fascinating to hear that. And so I, I want to share this with you because this that's essentially what this book is saying as well. So um, this, so for anything you have going on in your life at all, um, you know, personally, I don't believe you necessarily have to be specific and calling in a different type of angel to assist you with something, but I think there's also an extra energy to it if you do. So, so I'm just going to, before I even share this with you, I just want to say, so let's say for instance, you know, let's say you are do, giving a speech somewhere and you want help specifically with that, you know, go ahead. I mean, anything goes, anything goes. So go ahead and say, okay, speech angels. I would love for you to help me out with, you know, this speech or performance angels. I would love for you to come in and really support the, um, the flow and, and deliver my delivering of this message today, you know, or let's say, um, Let's say you're like, you know what, maybe you're short on time and you need to run to the grocery store and then run a couple of other errands and then get home and cook dinner for your family really quick and all this kind of stuff. You know, maybe call on time angels, the t time angels, please help me out. I've got all these different things to get, you know, to get to accomplish in this short amount of time. And I would really love your assistance in helping me to be able to accomplish all of it in the amount of time that I have. Right. Or maybe it's cooking angels. Maybe you're like, gosh, I really don't want to cook dinner tonight, but I got to, <laughs> I've got to. And so maybe you want to call in some motivation angels or some, you know, food angels, um, you know, make the dinner extra to help me make the dinner extra tasty, something like that. Get creative with it. Have fun with it. That's, 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 um, that's my newest awareness about that, that I just, I think is so fun. Um, this book, it's a little different, but I think it's still really cool. So I'm just going to read to you the different titles of angels and maybe give one sample or, or um, one example or two, but so here we go. So categories of angels, there's your companion angel, which is often referred to as your guardian angel, but they actually make a reference in here. Guardian angel implies a danger from which you need to be guarded. And we are evolving toward a way of living in the world where we are always safe. The closer you and your angel become, the closer we become, the closer we come to creating that reality. Your companion angel is your bridge to the spiritual realm, as you are its bridge to the physical. When you pick this angel, you are in, but well, okay, so they were talking about an exercise they had in here. Anyway, so that's your companion angel. Then they've got a connecting angel. So whenever you're in a group of two or more people, you can call upon your connecting angels. Um, there's an information angel. So... Uh, whenever you're looking to gain more insight or wisdom, a dream worker angel, if you're looking to maybe remember your dreams more or receive information through your dreams, there's a healing angel, a wiring angel. So let's say you're, you're, you're uh, working on becoming more positive, maybe developing a more positive mindset, positive self-talk and steering away from negative, you know, the wiring angel can come in and help you, you know, do that rewiring of your, of your mind to help you um, connect to those dots, build a stronger connection and rewiring of, of the way you do something. Um, there's a process angel, transformation angel, a pattern angel, reorganization angel, technology angel, environment angel, 
Oh my gosh, there's so many. Angel of nature, attunement angel, an angel of peace, an angel of grace. Um, there, also, there are also archangels. You've probably heard of those. So just want to share those. Of course, if you want to check them out more and read this book, then you can certainly do so. Uh, and this book, um, this is an older book. This was this book was given to me many years ago by my my second mother, my my stepmom, and um, I just love that she gave this to me. Yeah, this book was actually written in 1992. I probably received it around I don't know somewhere in the early 2000s, but so I just wanted to share that with you. Um, what else do I want to add to this? I have definitely found that the more that I am aware of an angel's presence in my life, and, and just so you know, for me personally, I am not someone who gets too technical on, oh, well, that's not really an angel. It must be this and this and this, or it must be that, you know, use a different term or whatever. Um, so I just want you to know where I'm coming from, okay? So um, I use different terms for things, but to me, everything is also an energy. So I don't really care. <laughs> If these aren't technically angels and they're really something else, um, just so you know where I stem from. So if anybody has a different belief, um, then I just want you to know where I'm coming from. Okay. But when I've noticed that the more, the greater awareness I have of angels in my life and, you know, choosing to, to talk to them and communicate with them, I see their presence in my life more often as well. And it's incredibly comforting and I'm very grateful. Um, and here, yeah, here's a little story. So, so what had happened with my grandmother and it was my, um, my step grandmother, but you know, she's my grandmother, um, is that at the very end of 2010, I started seeing 444 everywhere. And I was like, it, it, it had been happening for a while. And eventually I was like, okay, I started like actually noticing or, or identifying, okay, there's a pattern here. <laughs> I am seeing this a lot. And I don't think I looked up. Yeah. I, I didn't, I didn't look into it. I didn't research it or Google it or anything. I didn't, I didn't know that that would be anything. Um, but it was very obvious to me that I'd been seeing 444 for probably at least a month, maybe even a few months but definitely that December of 2010. And uh, in, I think it was just like a few days after Christmas, just a few days after Christmas that year, um, we found out that my grandmother went into the hospital and well, she was actually just having a regular procedure. And, but then there were complications with the procedure. So that was the part that, you know, found out about. And it was serious. Um, and so it was one of those things where it's like, okay, drop, literally drop everything and go out to, to visit and spend time with family. Um, and I'm trying to remember, I haven't told the story in so long. Um, so went out there and basically she was, um, she was unconscious and she, yeah, I think she had some sort of standard procedure. Sorry, I'm telling the story. It's taking a little longer, right? She basically had some sort of standard procedure and then something that was completely unexpected happened during the surgery, or I think it was even shortly after the surgery. And that's why she went um, unconscious, I think into a coma or so. And um, so then I flew out there and, you know, me, my brother, my sister, and my stepmom um, and some family friends, we were basically, you know, we spent about three to four days in the hospital with my grandma, grandmother, um, comforting each other and being there talking with her. And, uh, you know, unfortunately the news was that this isn't looking good. It does not look like she's actually going to recover from this and come out of it. And, um, and then there was that moment we were all in her hospital room and it was her, her last few, I guess, breaths or heartbeats. And yeah, and fortunately we were able to be there with her when she, she officially transitioned and, um, and I imagine left her body or, you know, who knows, maybe she technically left her body before then, but, um, but so it was, it was a very emotional time and, um, also just very powerful, you know, to be able to be there at that time in her life and, 
and I know I'm trying to feel the emotion. Okay, I'm trying to get to the story part, the the, the key part. So while I was, I was out there visiting, I was staying in my grandmother's house with my sister. And, um, and that night that my grandma passed away, I guess my sister or someone said that, you know, grandma always had a thing for angels, that she just really loved angels. And for some reason, and it just, I never really realized that or knew that. And it was amazing how when they said that, and I think they said it when we were already back at home that night. And all of a sudden I looked around and I saw, oh my gosh, there were angels everywhere. Hey Lillian, good to see you here. She literally had angel paraphernalia and decor everywhere in her home. The, the ceiling, there was a border, uh, a wallpaper border around the top of her ceiling that had angels, a bunch of cherubs. She had angel, um, like, you know, uh, like there's this one plaster thing in the form of an angel on her wall. And she had other lots of angel things hanging on the wall. She had tons of angel figurines in her bedroom, in the living room and other rooms. I mean, they were everywhere. And also I get, I think it was like right at, as I noticed that as well, I then remembered, oh, that's right. I've been seeing 444. Let me look that up. And so I looked it up on my phone and lo and behold, discovered that 444 is an angel that, or is a message is an angel message that the angels are surrounding you. And so it was this incredibly powerful moment to know that leading up to this emotional time with my family when my grandma passed away, that I'd already been getting all these messages and signs that the angels are with me. And then to be able to really lock that in and, and receive that message the day that she passed was just very powerful. So Anyway, so I just wanted to share that. And, you know, if this is resonating with you in any way, then, you know, to me, it doesn't even have to be any form of, you know, formality. You, you don't have to buy a book about angels, um, but you could if you want to, you know, of course, absolutely. But you could just start talking to your angels, you know, just, you know, as a friend, as a helper, someone who's there, no judgment. What is it that you would like to speak about and to um, receive some guidance or support on, you know, and, and just and share with them and talk and you know and ask for signs and messages and when you start seeing you know coins and feathers and and things like that around like those are also signs and evidence that you're being heard and um so anyway so i just want to share this and again the message of grounding to be able to have that greater connection and receiving their messages and and all that a grounding is incredibly helpful. So there's lots of lots of uh, things you can do to ground. Meditation is one of them that I absolutely recommend. And if you haven't yet, um, feel free to go ahead and download the free one I have on KimOnealCoaching.com. So, okay, so that's the discussion portion of today's video. I'm going to go ahead and pull some cards to go with it. If you would like me to pull a card for you as well, then let me know down in the in the live chat here, and I will happily pull you a card. But right now, let's go ahead and pull, literally, some angel cards. So I'm going to pull. I'm first going to pull from messages from your angels. How are you doing, Lillian? Good to see you here. Or if it's someone else that's here, I know there were actually two people here. So if you are here live and you're not Lillian, <laughs> feel free to say hello. Let me know if you'd like me to pull a card for you. Let's see here. Okay. What message wants to come through for everybody who views today's video? Okay. Okay. It is... Oh, nice. L says Leela. Okay, so it says, spend time alone in nature, meditating about your desires and intentions. Ask the angels to help you gain a positive perspective. Absolutely. So nature is another fantastic way to ground your energy and, of course, further connect with, you know, strengthen that connection with the angels. Um, beautiful. Let's pull... Let's pull a card from my other angel deck as well. Let's do that. 
Okay, see, this is why it gets messy, because then I start to leave everything out. So bear with me one moment. <laughs> Okay, there's that deck. Let's see, we're gonna pull now. Daily guidance from your angels. It's you? Okay, that's good, Lillian. <laughs> Thank you. Ooh, I didn't even ask yet. Okay, I think this is this is I think this is the one already. Mm. It says family. Okay, it says this situation is rooted in an emotional experience with a family member, which we can help you to understand and heal. In your mind and heart, surround this person, yourself, and the experience with calming blue light and many angels. Be open to the gifts within the situation and allow yourself to feel the peace. That is beautiful. So, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and read the book on this one. Um, and for anybody that this may resonate with, let's get some more info, okay? So it's saying, this card means that the question you asked, so it could also just be picking up on whatever's going on, right? This card means that the question you asked about is related to a family issue. It could be that some healing work is needed concerning one particular family member. It's the first person who comes to mind while reading this, while hearing this. Or this card might signal a need for more family togetherness, such as spending an evening or a holiday together. Your angels will guide you through this passage. Additional meanings for this card. A new addition to your family is coming. You have friends who are like a second family to you. It's time to face old feelings so they can be released and cleared. Release an unwanted pat or release an unwanted unwanted pattern by forgiving one or more family members, including yourself. Absolutely. Um, so very interesting family. Let's see. Let's pull another card. I'm trying to think here, which deck, which deck, which deck. Let's go ahead and pull a card. I'm actually going to pull a card from this. No, I'm going to pull a card. Here we go. I'm going to pull a card from Ask Your Guides. I have a guides deck I haven't been using yet in any of these videos. Ah, <sighs> light shuffling. I hope you're having a good day, Lillian. Yeah, he said good. I think that's you. That's <laughs> what he said. <laughs> good. I'm glad you're having a good day. <laughs> so am I. Okay, good. There's plenty of shuffling. Okay. Okay, what message wants to come through for everybody who views today's video? And please land right here where I can catch the card. <laughs> ah. Oh, interesting. Okay. It says... Okay, so these ones are a little different. It says invention, creativity guides. So let's see what this card is about. And let me know. Oh, and I opened up right up to it. Wow, that's cool. Let me know if any of these cards resonate with you. I would love to know whether you're live or on the replay. So, okay, so some different meanings for this card adaptation, adjustment, transformation, challenge. Sometimes life gives you lemons, but not to worry. Your creativity guides are on hand, helping you transform your lemons into lemonade. No matter who you are or what circumstances you've inherited, life is always a blend of both the positive and the negative. Your creativity guides urge you to be grateful for the pluses of your life and to be creative with the negatives. They'll help you use your inventiveness to transform any adverse situation into one, into one for the better. Okay. Into one. So, okay. They'll help you use your inventiveness to transform any adverse situation into one for the better. So rather than dwell on your lousy childhood, true. <laughs> okay. Sometimes this book gets like 
kind of specific like that. Okay, so rather than dwell on your lousy childhood, true though it may have been, appreciate the courage it developed in you and use it to change the unsupportive past into a self-reliant present. Rather than endure an unfulfilling job, be resourceful and start the business you've dreamed of for years. This is not to deny the pain in your life, but to use it as an incentive to move to higher ground. Allow your creativity guides to serve you. They are not afraid of the lemons you encounter in your life. Gather their juice as fuel to invent much better circumstances and ask them for inspiration and ideas. They have plenty to share. Their message, when you get lemons, make lemonade. So absolutely. I mean, this totally resonates with, with what I was saying earlier. Well, what I was with two things with what I said yesterday in the every day is a new day group video. If you happen to see that, um, I was very much talking about, um, you know, being deliberate and shifting our attention to something else, right? Sh shifting our intent attention to something more positive and identifying that those things that we don't like actually help us in moving in that direction as well, because they help us see in clarity. The other thing though, is remember, I was just talking about the different kinds of angels that we can call upon in the ask your angels book. And so this is also just saying, you know, you know, call on your, call on whether you, who, it doesn't matter if you call it creativity guides or creativity angels, right? You call it, you could call it creativity helpers, <laughs> call it whatever you want, but there is help in, and, there are resources out there for every single thing. So, so I love that. I love that. Right. Because we, it can be easy to think that you have to have all the answers. Well, I don't know how to heal my family situation. I don't know how to, you know, make this lemon into lemonade. Call, call on help, the help that you have. You do have it. Even if you've never experienced it up until this moment, or you've, you know, you've, you're just now thinking, Oh, I guess that's something I could do. Right. They are there and have always been there with you. Always, always, always. Um, let's see here. I'm going to wrap up with, let's pull, let's pull a self-care card. And again, if you were with me live, sorry, if you were with me, <laughs> just like, it's kind of bothering me. If you are with me live and you would like me to pull a card for you, then just say so in the comments and I will be happy to do that. And it's fine if you do not want me to. Just a reminder for anybody that may have popped on. Okay, let's see what self-care card wants to come through for everybody who views today's video. I'm gonna do bigger shuffling here. There we go. Okay. Okay, what self-care card wants to come through for everybody who watches today's video? Okay. Mm, okay. I'll take them. There are two cards that popped out. Let's see here. The first one is magnificence. Yeah. I love this card. Own the back says own your magnificence. The world needs your brilliance and grace. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's the back of it. And the second card that came out risk. The back says, take a risk. You have the power within to move mountains. I absolutely agree. And if there's something new that you're wanting to do and it doesn't feel like you have the power within to move mountains, you start with something that's small. So you start with whatever that first little thing is and then watch it, it grow and evolve and become something new and different. Um, and the more you do that, you build up your confidence. And then eventually you realize, oh my gosh, look at what I just did. <laughs> I just moved a mountain, right? So anyway, I hope that these messages are useful for you today. I love doing these and I hope you are enjoying them as well. And if you are not already in the Every Day is a New Day group, then you are absolutely invited to come and join us over on Facebook, just search for the group every day is a new day and let, uh, you know, cl click to join. And there are some other notification or some other stuff. I fact, Oh, the link is down below. That's right. The link is down below of this video. So just go ahead and go down there and click on that. 
And I hope you're doing well and having a wonderful weekend. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, take time for you. You know, here's the other thing. See, I know the message is magnificence, but do you need to give yourself a hug? <laughs> I know I'm laughing because we can think it's cheesy, right? I did this for myself the other day and I was like, oh my gosh, that actually feels really good. <laughs> If you are feeling in need of a hug, be mindful that you can always give yourself a hug and allow yourself to take that in because you are worth it. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up here, but thank you for joining me, whether you're live or on the replay. Let me know what you're taking away from today's video. I would love to know. And if you enjoyed this video, please do click the like button. Uh, and if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. You can also click the notification bell to receive notifications of when I go live next time since I am just doing them at random times every day. So thank you for being here and I'll see you tomorrow.